and welcome to the MBS Show, episode number 290. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is... Wills. I rise to come to this live stream and have a wonderful time with you folks. How y'all doing? Hello, Wills. How are you doing? I think I covered that in the intro, but I'm doing quite well, if exhaustedly tired. I see, I see. All right, you And also joining me today is... Starstream. Hello, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, you're not a tired one. Are you okay, man? <laughs> Just feel a bit um, sleepy. <laughs> oh yeah, it is kind of past the normal bedtime for you, right? Not really. I uh, just feel a bit um, lazy moment. Ah, uh, yes. We we all have those moments. But it's all okay because we're going to have a fun, fun time here, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that doesn't sound convincing. <laughs> uh, Yay. Hey, what a wonderful time we are having. Yes, my minions. Yes. But anywho, talking about not having a fun time... Mattel rejects Hasbro again. Poor, poor Hasbro. They wanted to buy out Mattel, but Mattel said no. <coughs> Mattel's making all that sweet, sweet Monster High loot. You think they're going to give it up? Not without a fight. Because that's one thing Mattel has over on Hasbro is Mattel. At least their dolls look great. Can't can't fault them for good craftsmanship there. Well, they've been doing Barbie for how long? Not to mention they have the AG series doll. Mm, true, true. And, well, it's a good thing for me personally because we have competition. Competition brings out the best in people. Yay. Yay. Wave a small flag. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but still, it's an update to last week's news, so that's good to know. That's good to know. And now let's head into the real proper news. The proper news is the My Little Pony movie, it grows 50 mil worldwide. So, yay! Woo! Cool. Now, that's a good one. That's good. That's good for a small time, what is considered a direct to video sort of movie. I mean, that's what it was considered anyway by the general populace. So, hey. Last we updated this one, we said it was around 30 mil. Was it 30 mil or was it 35 or 40 mil? Somewhere around there. Well, it was the trios. It was yeah, 35, something like that. But still, it's at 50 mil, so that's good. At least sales in Singapore and other parts of the region did help it a bit. Now, um, parts of Europe need to show it too, and probably will reach 60 mil, probably. But this is not bad. When you think about uh, the Pony movie itself, like you mentioned, Will... It's kind of a quote-unquote direct-to-video kind of thing, but I say that for a first time, this is kind of acceptable. Yeah, maybe uh, next time, because they do they do say they want to make another movie, so maybe next time we'll get something that, I don't know, doesn't have to hit every beat. Maybe the, maybe the, maybe good old Hasbro will just let the animators and the storytellers tell a good story and make a good movie instead of having to force all the merchandising into it. Nah. <laughs> well, you say that, but not really, because I didn't see the um storm. No, not storm king, but uh tempest's um hover ride. That was a toy before. Remember that? That one was not there as a toy. It was well, they sold it, but it was not promoted in the movie. So that's something good. And well, I do hope for the second movie they'll let the writers go crazy and do less. Um, celebrity appearances because the celebrity appearances in the movie didn't really warrant it. It was nice, but it was not great. Mm. But anywho, uh, with the movie out, I want the DVD. We all want the DVD, right? Like, we want to watch it all the time um, on our Blu-ray players and also digital and something like that. And if you want to do the same, you can do so... As early as December, because Liongate announced that the digital version will be released on December 19, while the Blu-ray and DVD will be in January 9, 2018. So, yay! We'll be getting the DVD sooner than we expected. Like, woof! Hmm. Well, and if you can't wait that long, well, yar har fiddle dee. 
<laughs> I don't think it's out. But you know what? I'm not going to comment on anything. I'm not going to do research. <laughs> I think you could pre-order it right now, right? I think so. Pre-order is available if yeah. you want to. Yep. You can pre-order it over in Amazon in digital format or the physical copy of the UK or German website. Alrighty then. And Will, will you be buying the DVD for this? Me? Nah. No? Nah, I'll probably just uh, wait till Netflix has it and then just rip it directly off of that. Oh no. Hey, I'm honest. <laughs> that you are. Unless the DVD or Blu-ray or something has more than just... the If the special features are more than subtitles and <laughs> stereo surround sound... Then, then maybe I will. Well, funny that you mentioned the features because the Blu-ray DVD combo pack and also the digital release will include deleted scenes, Equestrian Girls short, baking with the pie, f- uh, features. What, what, what was that? Baking with the pie features. Well, I think Pinky it's the video. Pinkie Pie. Yeah, okay. Baking with Pinkie Pie. Uh, magic with the main six and their new friends. Uh, the journey beyond Equestria. I, I'm the friend you need. Music video sung by T. Diggs and Hanazuki, the full tra- treasure, the f- full of the treasure. Well, Feature it. <laughs> yeah, well, whatever. It, it, it's that there uh, played before the movie. So yay, you you have that in the DVD. So I say go for it. Mm, deleted scenes. That does sound interesting. As it covers the one that is available inside the book. Probably. And the book only shows that one deleted scene. So I'm curious to know if we have more. I think there's more in the book too. I don't really remember. But still. There is a lot in the book, actually. <laughs> really now? Well, you know yes. what? I am, I, I'm curious now. So let's see what we get in the deleted scenes for the DVDs. Because I want to know if they uh, went so far as to cast um, the quote-unquote Celestia's brother. Or talk about the scorpion, or yeah. even the mud giant. Yeah, I, I wonder if they did voice it or not, because it's a deleted scene, so if they went that far, that means, ooh. Uh, something I, one, thing, I, one thing that I want to see, though, was the the deleted version of the opening scene. Uh, it's, it's a bit different than the one that we get in the movie. Oh, yeah, you did get a chance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what? Yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm curious about that, too. So... We'll have to wait and see. We'll have to wait and see. So that's the features for the Blu-ray. So I can't say much. And talking about, well, quote-unquote features, uh, you guys are a big fan of the Quest Regals, uh series because I know I am. Will, I remember you are too? <laughs> no, not really? Yeah. Sort of. Yeah. Sort of. It's, it's an A. A very long A. Well, like I said before, it's entertaining here and there, but mm, I don't know. I still say it's, I wish they hadn't come up with the process. I wish there was just more of the exploration of the actual world though that we already have instead of making this cookie cutter, teeny bobber high school world. Because yeah. like, right. come on, I got enough of high school with high school. I don't want to go back to high school. Like, don't you ever want to go back to high school? No, I want to avoid my reunion at any cost. <laughs> if you say so, man, if you say so. But Nikon Flown uh, did a poll on the Twitters, kind of, well, people ask him and here are his thoughts. And so, uh, is Equestria Girl canon? And the response from the fandom says that, um, well, 66% says EQG and Friendship is Magic are the same canon, while some say no, uh, it's a matter of opinion, and I I pick and choose, which is viable too. And Nick's answer here is, for his point of view, that is canon. One thing is that effect here does effect there too. So it's interesting to see that he says that it's canon, well, from his point of view. And Josh Heber um, he says that you are so thoughtful and considerate. It's pretty simple. It's all one universe, all multiverse. E.G. or Equestria Girl is canon, full stop. So, yeah, the showrunners are saying that 
the Equestria Girl line of stories are canon. So that's fascinating to see. I just can't wait to see the mirror in the library for season 8. That'll be fun to see. It's just there mocking people. I'm here. You can see me. I can just enter in and out anytime you want. <laughs> Or maybe they just show the sunset, sunset shimmer's face in the mirror after that they just like, in one scene after that the next scene is like, there is no longer that face. <laughs> or you could just see her coming in and out of the mirror. <laughs> ah yeah, or cameos. <laughs> yeah, no, say nothing, just walking through in and out, just taking something from the fridge. <laughs> yeah, man, all I want, all I want is, I mean, all I want is for Sunset just to, I don't know, come back and have a scene with Celestia. Is that too oh, much to ask? Yeah. Is that too much to ask? Yeah, I know what you mean, man. Like, that scene. We want that scene. Maybe in Season 8. Maybe in Season 8. <clears throat> but with that, let's head on to the final agenda on the news. And... This one is going to be a really funny one in my point of view, but I'm not sure about you guys, but it seems that um, in Portugal, some parents are freaking out because after a Facebook post with rarity, with a weed cigarette goes viral, um, some parents are kind of in an uproar. Ooh, angry, angry. But after some research... uh. They ain't no Mary Jane. That's a nail file. So, what do you guys think? I think the only one getting high is the parents, because seriously, he had to look at that and he's like, it's weed! Yes, yes. Weed totally made it into a children's cartoon, where a children's cartoon character is toking it up live on cartoon television. Mm Mm-hmm. Or... Common sense ain't that common in the Portuguese area. Portugal. I, I thought that was for the whole world. Besides, everyone knows that it's Fluttershy that's totally toking it up. Yeah, come <laughs> on, she's best friends with Tree Hugger after all. I doubt that. She has Discord. Yeah, true. Who needs drugs when you're friends with Discord? <laughs> See? <laughs> oh, boys. But then again, then again, if you were to take drugs and hang out with Discord... No, Whoa. no, no, no. The NBS show does not condone the use of illegal substances. Well, it isn't illegal in half the states now. <laughs> <laughs> well, the states, yes, but not around the world. But, uh, Star, what do you want to say? Well, I'm quite surprised by the fact that, um, I mean, can't they just, uh, well, what, the thing is that maybe in Portugal they get the blurry photo, so they thought it was just wheat. Yeah. Because, okay, here's the thing. Um, I posted a picture of this in the Discord chat. And I'll tell you guys where to look for this. Um, it's in Season 6, Episode 3. Um, I think the episode title is called The Gift of the Mod Pie. This scene is very early in the episode where Pinkie Pie and Rarity are in the Friendship Express going to Manhattan. Manhattan, right? I think she was going to open the new base, right? Or something like that? Yeah, yeah, something like that. So it's Manhattan. So this is where she's just filing her nails and whatnot. You know, like how rarity is. And somehow that that blurry picture there <laughs> says it's a joint. <laughs> how? Yeah, you know, twisted minds and all this kind of thing. So it's like, oh god, it's like, why do you promote people smoking joints? Think Maybe of they the have children. Yes, think of the children. Well, I think probably because Portugal may have a bit of an issue with their wheat. Then again, I'm pretty sure we're already stressed out enough having to hang out with Pinkie Pie. She probably does need a toke in order to handle that pink monstrosity. <laughs> oh, no love for the oh, darling. I just need to get through this for one day. <laughs> oh, that's the that's the good stuff, darling. Oh God, no, no, no. Bad wheels, bad. <laughs> uh, but with that, that's the end of the news. Uh, well, we, we ended pretty lulzy. So, you know what? Let's head on to the next topic. And next topic is what have we been doing with our weeks? And you know what? Let's go for mm, Will's week. How was it? Well, nobody got shot. That's good. <laughs> 
That's I'll about the highlight. Start. That's about the highlight. <laughs> um, just been doing a lot of work. Got my car fixed. Oh, that's good. And I finally beat Divinity 2 Original Sin, which I can fi- give it a wholehearted, glowing review about. I can say there's some positives and there's some negatives. Um, I The campaign on hard, not uh, hardcore mode. Hardcore mode is where if you die, you lose and have to start over from the beginning. Which is Ooh. good that I didn't select that because the game took me 158 hours to beat. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. yeah and I died. A lot. This is a game that will challenge you. Uh, if you like pen and paper RPGs and you like thinking outside the box for things, then you'll like this, mostly. I'd suggest not playing it on the hardest difficulty to start off with because you, you'll be smashing your face into the ground more so than anything. Because <laughs> this game is cruel. It's cruel and unusual. I think I talked about it before, where it had yes, teleporting crocodiles. Yeah. Uh, I think you left that part out. So, yeah. Oh. Yeah one, of the first, yeah, one of the first enemies you encounter is crocodiles on a seashore. And, you know, you're high up and you got the height advantage. And it's like, oh, well, if the crocodiles, they have to slither all the way around this entire side and they can't climb up ladders. Haha, <laughs> we can just snipe them from up here. And then they just teleport on the sandbar right behind you. Because, yeah, crocodiles can do astral projection. Yep. Who knew? Uh, astral phase shift is what it's called. It's just, yeah, sure, sure. Crocodiles can do that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, sure. Uh, but, uh, the final boss, oh, oh gosh, that took me around 15 hours and I had to respec four times. Oh, wow. Yeah. Mostly because it was on the hardest difficulty. I mean, gosh. But I do have to say it's a great game nonetheless. Great game nonetheless. And, um, Nah, I'm not going to spoil anything about it. I would say uh, definitely just have fun on your first playthrough. Be however you want to be. If you want to be a goody two-shoes, fine. If you want to be a jerk, go ahead and do it. If you want to be a person who's only in it for the money and the glory, you can do that too. All right. Just all right. remember, Losa's the best companion. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. How can so, you not like a fire or a redhead? True that, true that. Uh, I ain't going to argue with you there. So that's about it, man. Yeah, yeah, that's about it. Alrighty then. And what about you, Star? What have you been doing every week? Uh, a lot of things have been done. Well, somewhat done, I think. Well, oh. I've been trying to talk with one of the plush maker and try to get a commission for my new cuddle size Luna. Woo. Ah, alright. Yeah. How's that going? Uh, it's there, just that it's a bit of um, a bit of a request here and there, kind of like one this kind of features and whatnot. It will eventually get it done here and there. So yeah, it's the size is still a bit of um questionable for me because I'm not sure whether or not I want it to be the same as my current Fluttershy or just a bit bigger. Show sure accurate. If show sure accurate means it's gonna be a life size, which is gonna be about nine hundred US dollar, which is gonna <laughs> some nah. oh, I don't know cash. Still been and not to mention that it's been looking through uh, eBay and whatnot, just looking through stuff here and there, watching live st- Twitch live stream, trying to get into live stream, and well, it's there overall. All right, all right. There and is- well, since um, what do you call this? Black Friday is coming up soon, so if you are looking at the eBays and whatever it is, uh, you might pick something up. I may, but um, well, at least it's close to our paycheck, so it may. It's close for you, but not me. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, well, it's on the 24th, but my patch is maybe on 26. I don't know. Uh, up to you, bro. Up to you. But be sure to spend it wisely. Yeah, well, it's going to be a bit bad, bad moment. I hope there's promotion. If oh, there's sure. not, then... Yeah, no, maybe... Well, I'm still trying to get the audio stuff. Ah, and yes. Again, I I'm... Then again... I don't even know whether or not the government were gonna tax it hard or not. Oh, true that, true that. There's a thing to worry about. And l- last to say, I did wash um one one of my plush, so that's that's nice. Oh, who? Uh, what did you wash? Nah, I just washed one of my bunny that I always sleep with. I always uh, bring around with. All right, all right. So is now it clean now? Uh, yep. Now smell a bit detergent. <laughs> 
uh, it'll pass. It'll pass. Yeah. All right. So anyway, as for me and my week, uh, nothing pretty interesting or exciting. I seen a movie. Um, said movie is called Justice League. Um, oh no. Okay, here's the thing. Um, I'll say this. I was not a huge fan of Batman vs Superman. To me, that movie was aggravating. But going into Justice League, I was full-heartedly going in with the mindset of, okay, let's see how bad this could be. I went out totally enjoying it. It's one of those scenarios where I felt that they knew what they were and they're not pretending to be some award-winning movie or they're not trying to be the Dark Knight or whatever it is. They went in, they know their thing, and they did it. Obviously, there's a few hiccups with the story, but the movie was fun. I would say that most of the time, I was laughing at the movie and I was laughing with the movie. So... I say give it a shot, give it a chance if you can, because the movie was pretty fun. Full review of that movie will be at the end of the year, where me and Silver and whoever else will be joining us will be talking about the movie of the 2017s that we watch. Besides that, play a bit of Overwatch today, play around with some... Uh, well, not really played. I opened a box of my Gundam that I recently bought, and decided to either to cut it or not. Yes. Either I should cut it or not. And I'm just wondering, should I, should I not? Should I, should I not? I don't have the time, no. And also checking out some PC stuff, because my PC really needs an upgrade. Mm-hmm. Oh, boys. Oh, at least one thing I can say, though. EA has removed their microtransaction on Battle... Uh, Star Wars Battle. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> Wills, you got anything to say about that? Yeah, don't fall for it. EA is just being a butt. Uh, just don't buy any games from them, period. This whole, uh, they're still gonna be putting stuff back in. They said they're temporarily removing it because they're listening to their customers. Yeah, don't believe this bullcrap. It's just, they're doing it right now because there's pressure on them, but they'll go right back to doing it. The only way they're gonna learn is if you just don't pay, give them any money. So, don't buy their game. Pirate it. No, don't, yeah. don't even, don't even give them the satisfaction, man. Like the Dude, thing is, okay. I will, I will, I will, I will buy, I will buy games if they're worth buying. That's what I've been doing since high school, and there are a lot of games I have purchased because they're good. The developers are good, they're not jerks who are all about getting just some money. No, they're not about getting all the money. But you have to see, or you have to understand that Dice, who made the game are pretty cool guys. They made the game. They enjoyed making the game. But the problem Dice is, is gonna be Dice is gonna be thrown under the bus in a few years anyway. Yeah. No, I think the problem was EA because not to mention that it's not just Star Wars, there was um Need for Need Speed. For Speed mm-hmm. And that was really, really bad. Yeah. And here's the thing, I mean okay, true, Dice is not involved with any of this. They're just the developers. But when somebody makes a game, it's always the guy who makes the game that gets blamed for stuff. So if sale expectation doesn't hit, DICE is going to get X. If something doesn't work, developers get um, X or gets blamed. EA, the publisher, sometimes doesn't get scolded. But in this scenario here, everybody knows it's EA. Because Criterion who made... Need for Speed. Uh, did Criterion make that one? Start? No idea. Let me anyway, check. Uh, it should be Criterion if I remember right, but any developer who made Need for Speed, they know what they're doing. Except when um, you put in... It's Ghost Games. Oh, Ghost Games. So I haven't heard of them before. But anyway, do the game, make it work. But if you insert DLC or insert loot box mechanics like this... Fans are not going to be happy. Well, they were the one who makes the Need for Speed Rivals and Re- Need for Speed 2015 edition. Oh, uh, Rivals. I remember that. was not a big fan. One more thing, though. And we also got the release of Pokemon. Oh, <laughs> and yeah. And I haven't played it. <laughs> I haven't even 
bought it yet. Uh, I'm not feeling it, man. Not feeling it. Nope. But anywho, uh, don't buy Star Wars or any EA games if you're not interested in it. Like, just buy indie games. Yeah, buy indie games if you want. Uh, that even that has problems there too. Eh, uh, yeah. Yeah. You know what? Buy what we say to buy. <laughs> ah, no. Just buy all the pony stuff. <laughs> yeah, buy pony stuff. That'll solve all your problems. <laughs> so, anywho, um, with that, uh, if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at show. My personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. And, Wills, where can the good people find you? Uh, if you guys want to find me, you can find my art at willsonatdeviantart.com, or you can find my, uh, writings or pwn at filmfiction at willsonatfilmfiction.com. There you go. Alrighty then. And, Star, what about you? People can find me on my DeviantArt and Twitter, AngelicorXX. Alrighty then. Oh! Uh, Wills, I remember you showing me your flash, uh, pony figure. How did this, how is that going? Oh, still trying to figure out this puppetry stuff, man. Ah, I see. Do update us when you're done 100% or something. Just tell us something when you're done. Because I would love to see it, man. Oh, well, it is done. It, the, the flash puppet is done. I commissioned to have it made. It's, I'm still learning how to operate this thing. Ah, all right. But still, uh, I would love to see how you operate it once it's well, once you're done something with it. But <laughs> anywho, <Okay. laughs> but anywho, also please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube, and Stitcher Radio, and also like our Facebook page. Links will be in the show notes below. Uh, also, do subscribe to our new project, the Ambitious Reviews and Discussion Podcast, on iTunes and Stitcher Radio. Over there, you'll get me, Silver Quill, Sapphire Heart Song, talking about the pony episodes, comics, and also movies. On top of that, we also talk about other random cartoons, comics, or movies. We love to do that. We love to discuss about things or stuff. Uh, and if you'd like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash the MBS show. With every support, you'll get early access to the review and discussion podcasts deleted contents and exclusives on the Patreons and also a huge thank you from me and talking about thank yous I would like to thank Lurker Cat and Precatorius Starstream Master of Black and also Amy thank you guys for the awesome support you have been really really great so anyway I have been Norman Sanzo I have been Willison this is Starstream <laughs> alrighty then so anyway I have been <laughs> So anyway, we'll see you guys next week with another fun episode of Mere Show. See ya. Turtle out. Turtle out. <laughs> what the- <laughs>